Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you guys are excited for some more plunder. I feel like I've uploaded like a billion videos of this probably, but it's such a fun deck and I haven't played it in a long time since I played standard all of last all of this season. So I figured we'd give it a try since the win rate was actually much better than I thought. I haven't seen it like at all on the ladder or on videos. And so I thought it kind of just like fell off the map since so many other decks are good at the moment. But it's actually putting up some pretty good stats. The archetype as a whole is doing really well. This is specific, I think it's like 54% win rate overall as an archetype, I can check in a second. But this specific uh, deck bust has a 62% win rate over 93 games. And so I figured get, I'd give it a try. Uh, specifically, this list is different from the one I enjoyed playing over the past few months before like Standard Eternal became a thing. Uh, by the way, 94 or 54% win rate overall for the archetype. I like to use Monster Harpoon. Never mind, this one does have Monster Harpoon. I thought I chose one that doesn't have Monster Harpoon. I like Monster Harpoon. I think it's a really good card. Dealing 5 to a unit kills a lot of the important cards in the meta, things like Seraphine. And so I thought that'd be a, a nice card in the deck. It's pretty efficient removal for only 4 mana to be able to kill most of the threats on the opponent's board. And usually things like, you know, a Viego, you might not be able to kill. But if our opponent is investing that much mana in a big unit, hopefully by that point we can kind of just go wide and finish off, finish them off with burn and just like a wide attack rather than necessarily trying to develop a board control through like kill spells because we have so many early efficient removal spells against their like vile feast units and stuff. So yeah, let's give this a try. I'm excited to see how it does. Um, yeah, thank you again for all the support lately guys. I'm really excited to get like back in this regularly. I think it's been about a week now almost that I've been streaming again. Uh, I didn't stream last night. Sorry about that. I had uh, I was talking to an old friend that I hadn't talked to in a while, so that was cool. And with work and everything, it's kind of hard to like squeak in the free time of like streaming and work and all this crazy stuff. So I didn't end up streaming last night, but I played a few games of Seraphine Samira, and it didn't go well. <laughs> Nar Evelyn. I'm a little curious about this. Also, I totally forget this skin exists. I don't even know if I like, like, Black Market Merchant here. I feel like it's kind of like an aggro matchup, almost. Like, maybe, maybe Mega Rain's not that bad, because it can hit a Plunder Trigger and kill some Husks, which will stuff their Evelyn level up, which is pretty big. But yeah, like, Mariah Warden is so much better here than the Black Market Merchant, I feel. They have uh, Freljord, not, not Shadow Isles, so I'm pretty confident Mariah Warden can do some work. I think I will play Mariah Warden here, because I'm going to want to open attack next turn. Rather than just play Spirits Unleashed. That's a pretty good hit. Now we could just offer the pass because I would like to play Spirits Unleashed next turn. So I think I'll just attack first just with this dude. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that's fine. They stop our Plunder Trigger, but I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world. Like now, I might just go Make It Rain. And then Spirits Unleashed next turn. Spirits Unleashed will kill... The domination. Now they don't have a husk to get Evelyn. Turn five, we can play Gangplank. I think that seems fine. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a fairly decent trade for us. We get the husk and domination. Vora can't attack now. Unless they use a pump spell, I suppose. But again, I don't know. I think I'm okay with forcing out a card like that. They could have Hate Spike. Because Hate Spike's a... Is, is that an Evelyn card? That's someone house. Yeah, so it, it, it can't be. I think I just land Gangplank here. They don't have an easy way to kill him. We could kill something with Parley. Well, that'll do it. So is it worth the attack here? Probably not. I'm thinking just go here. Sure. I think that's still a fine trade. We just don't get our uh, Nexus trigger. A Thunder trigger. Why do I keep saying that? I think I'm just going to pass. I don't think the tag is worth it here. We have Sejuani for our next attack. So if we play Sejuani, or not, sorry, if we play Spirits Unleashed. Do 
Do I care about this? I don't think so. I think we just respond with our own. Ooh, hold on, hold on. Because this is just this round. So if we play Spirits Unleashed, we take seven from the Everestin Century. I think that's fine. Or we could play Make It Rain into Black Market Merchant. I actually think that might be better here. I don't know if the plus one, plus one stat difference is huge because we'll damage the Everest and Hearth Guard with the Make It Rain anyway. Meaning Sejuani or Gangplank can just pull him next turn when he's vulnerable. And this gives us a nice chump block of this turn, plus some card advantage. Plus it leaves up some mana, which is nice. Ooh, what is this? Uh, yeah, I mean, if we block, it makes it harder for them to keep the Everest and Sentry alive next turn. Plus we save a good chunk of health. But like a third thing is not bad. He's still like a good attacker at this point. We could just throw away our gangplank, but I don't think that's worth it. I think I might just take this damage. You dare slack on my ship. We might lose if they have buried and ice, but I don't know if this is a buried and ice deck. I think I'm gonna gamble that they're not. We'll have our plunder leveled up by our next attack turn, though, so that's good. Warm hearts and hot suits. Break their legs. Ride onward. I'm totally fine if they take this block. Cool. I'm happy with that. Ooh. It's not bad. At this point, though, we just Spirits Unleashed uh, sets up our level up. I have the tendency to cast. Yep, away. I'm just going to absolutely rip Spirits Unleashed here. Ooh, I forgot. That, never mind, that doesn't kill the Haunted Husk. Um, oopsies. So now they actually get to level up Evelyn. That was an oopsies. I totally forgot that um, the Husk had two health from their Spirits Unleashed. But we level up Gangplank anyways, so... We should be fine. Think like Ensign Joni. Only the strong survive. And we have three three plunder triggers anywho. Yeah, I definitely should have killed a Scoopsies. See what's beneath while I see what's inside. I mean, they don't even have an attack here. We don't have to use our uh, Make It Rain or Warning Shot here. Yeah, sweet. I'm pretty happy with that. And I think our warning, our open attack is pretty decent. Gangplanks are joining the board at the same time is so nasty. They could have like an entomb. If we go make it rain. Well, I guess one, two, three, four. I guess it's lethal anyway, so I'm just gonna let this resolve. Then we have lethal here. Ooh, that's a pretty nasty retina. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? Why did I think we had lethal? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did I think the fourth damage was coming from? Oopsies, that's a bit of a brain fart, huh? <laughs> Alright, well we got a Naka just in case they have like a board wipe next turn. That's actually hilarious, I can't believe that. I, I, I literally don't even know where my math brain went. That's so funny. Many under one 
We have lethal in the open, so I don't need to do anything here. We can play Anaka just for funsies. Alright, GG. Yeah, a little awkward. Um, I guess in hindsight, we could have make it rained when our one attacker was being hate spiked on that last attack. Because if we did hit the husk there with the... No, no, because the husk had three health, so make it rain wouldn't have killed it, right? So I think either way, we kind of just had to let that go, and I, I just miscalculated the math. Mm -hmm. Oopsies. But what can you do? Okay, so my mom and I love watching baseball at night. Like, usually, like, when we're heading to bed, we'll go watch baseball together and, like, read for, like, 30 minutes, just chill out. She just texted me, MATT, in all caps, like, a super, super long text. So I'm a little worried that I'm a Yankees fan, and we're tied 1-1, so I don't know what the big deal is. Jarvan Garen, what's good in this matchup? I actually don't mind Bur uh, Bjerg, but it's a little... A little awkward. It's not like a fantastic card, I don't think. Because it's just not good enough stats to handle elites. Like, it doesn't even kill, like, a Badger Bear. But it's not bad. It really sets up our late game if we need to find a Sejuani, so I think it's fine to keep. I'll keep one, obviously, not two. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think I'm happy with this. I love, I love Shell Shocker on turn one. Keeping that mana so we can potentially do a... Spirits Unleashed earlier. Hmm, I'm definitely going to develop here. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm going to open attack again. We can just push damage. Get our Black Market Merchant and Jagged Butcher down this turn. And play Bjerg, hoping for Gangplank on turn 5, and then Gang Sejuani on turn 6. Like, we're cooking. Pump spell, pump spell, pump spell. Oh, that's actually really nasty too. Holy smokes. What if we just go... Sergeant for 2 mana on turn 4? We have 5 mana? Yeah, next turn we can literally just play 4 to Masia. That's so insane. Our opponent's so far behind on board. I don't think there's anything we can do to catch up. By the time our... I mean, this isn't bad. Sure. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play for Demacia. I don't want to give them time to develop units. Like if I go unit, they get an action. Plus for Demacia, they get an action. I think I'm just gonna slam it. Stand strong. Soldier, to me. That's not bad. I still think I just slam in. They get one good block. But if they have to sacrifice most of their board here, we're incredibly happy. This is like such a good value turn for us, I think. Like how many times is our Shell Shocker going to trade with their three mana unit, you know what I mean? Hmm. I actually don't even know if I want to play Stinky Wump. Because I might need the room for the kegs soon. We'll see what they do. Show them what we're made of. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Give attacking allies plus one, plus one, and fearsome. That's not bad at all. Hmm. I kind of think I just want to go Sejuani here. But then what? I think I take some damage this turn and just place a Juani next turn so we can kill Sithria.
Concerted Strike is my biggest worry here, since our Sejuani is still not leveled. I think I'll rip this first. Because what if they play an even more threatening unit? I wanted to try to kill that Badger Bear before they get more units on the board. Nice. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. But that's one unit less that they can Concerted Strike with. So now if we freeze Cythria, they'll only have the 3-2 available. That's not good for us. That's not good for us at all. But we get to kill one Cythria. Chump lock. Do I attack with my other dudes and try to, try to push damage? I'm really considering it. Let's say they block block, we push 5. Yeah, so definitely, right? Because we have two units we can play here. One will have Fearsome. And they just like lose that blocker. Oh wait, cool, GG. Not bad, that was really good for us. Um, I don't think I played anything particularly well. It was just the fact that our opponent had such a slow start, so. Sometimes you can just, you know, take those when you can. It's a victory, but nothing that I did really, you know, special. But I miss this deck. Like, I don't know what it is about Plunder. I just find it such a fascinating aggro deck. It's, like, more like a mid-range tempo deck, almost, if you consider, like, you have to consider when to play Spirits Unleashed, how to set up your champions. I don't know. I find it so fascinating. Uh. Uh. Is this... Championless Timelines? Then also the PNC. Only 49% win rate. It is the timeline stack. So I'll keep Spirits Unleashed. Can pick off like Bird, Boom Boom Boom, Conchologist. Pitch the rest. Very, very fascinating matchup here. I'm honestly a little worried. Turn one Punter Trigger. Always happy for that. I don't think developing Jagged Butcher did does anything. When the following turn we can play uh, Spirits Unleashed plus Jagged Butcher. Yeah. I think like this is so good for us to try to force a Mystic Shot out of their hand on our one drop. Just to try to stop the Plunder Trigger. Perfect. That lined up pretty alright for us, I think. I'm going to play Spirits Unleashed Jagged Butcher here. Even though it leaves us without a clear play for next turn. Um... Maybe, maybe that's not a great play. But I think it's, I think it's okay. Because next turn, even if we can't do anything. Nice, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, maybe that was a silly play. I'm trying to think how else we could have played that. Just, just played Spirits Unleashed. I don't know, I don't know if it does much. Yep, I'm happy to take this block. Maybe that was... I uh, Now I'm really regretting it. I feel like that turn off was really not good. This just gets hit by Explodorator, then we're really sad. I think I'm gonna go Spirits Unleashed one more turn. Uh, it puts Juani into harder to kill range. But it makes even our Black Market Merchant really good. And I don't wanna, I don't, if I play Gangplank there and they do have a Explodorator, which I don't even know if that's something they play in their deck. I don't think it is, probably not. So they play probably Get Excited and Augmented Experimenter. So that probably wasn't the uh, best play. Oh wait, that's actually kind of hilarious. Is that any good? I don't know. I'll take the pass because we can have freezes soon. I might be able to use this guy pretty effectively. Oh dear. Dead man. 
I'll develop. Banana Blaster gets us, probably. The Spears Unleashed buff is really nice. So uh, it'll be hard for Banana Blaster to kill our champions. How do we go into next turn with the most efficient mana? I feel like I really messed up this turn on that turn 4 thing. It's feel, it felt kind of clunky since then. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So is there anything off the top we'd want to play, really? Like, I don't even I don't even know. I'm just going to pass. Our opponent is burning mana, so I do want to make them do things first. Oh, what is that all about? Is this setting up a banana blaster? Because our champions won't be leveled, I don't need to give up mana for, like, make it rain plus a joint to the frostbite stuff. So I'm just going to try to get some... Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Something like this. I think I just, I have Nagabros here. I don't care to kill this thing enough, and I'd rather get in some damage with Gangplank before he dies. Plus it's a 4-4. Break, Break their legs. Even if they block here to get Gangplank low, they take 5 damage on his Overwhelm. This way, come along. Or if they play like... Pie toss. Get excited. Now we rip Make It Rain. Guaranteed to hit this guy. So now they're forced to do another spell. Oh yeah, that's nice. Next turn we can level Gangplank. The following turn, place a Juani. Ooh, or we can do both this turn. So yeah, they need to kill Station Archivist right now. I'm going to play Tusk Speaker because it enables either our Monster Harpoon if we have to. Oh my gosh. I mean, this guy is just more damage. Cool. Now, that must be so frustrating for our opponent too, loses like that. That's like instantly like so much threat onto their Nexus. Gangplank's up to 5 health now. Uh, if they give us another action, we can develop Sejuani for the open attack. Well, I mean, they're going to give us another action at some point this round. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not we'll be able to use the freeze effectively. Our opponent's going to want to use this. I'm going to play Sejuani here. She's leveled, and for six mana, I don't think they can do enough to stop us. I'd rather just guarantee we get Sejuani on board rather than have them end the round. Even though Gangplank would likely be enough next turn. She's an 8-9. Like, what are they going to do? I think it's better to just get her on board. Now they have two champions they have to deal with for the open attack. Yeah, that's not enough. Two mana right here. For a four mana unit, probably not going to be enough to stop us. Ooh, that's really good if they do kill Gangplank here. If this isn't enough to kill Gangplank, we have Fury of the North for next turn. I mean, we'll have Fury of the North for either one next turn. Nice, okay. That's pretty good for them. But we'll get potentially seven damage just in the air. Nice. Okay. I think that's really bad for our opponent. I don't think they have any response for this unless they have a stun. Alright, GG. Man, I feel like we're cruising through these games. The stream's only been going for 25 minutes. I feel like we've got, already gotten in a ton of games. I have no idea when the um, season ends, so I'm sure we're not going to get close to Masters this time around for the turtle. Um, next season, obviously, we will want to be playing from the beginning, but... Mighty Tony for Mayo. I know I've played against this guy so many times. I think it's so funny that, like, because I guess you know it translates like your hidden MMR from Standard. It knows, like, I'm a good enough caliber player to be playing against Masters players. But it's so funny seeing, like, Silver 2 versus Masters. Like, if I was playing any other game where, like, I was an actual Silver player, you know what I mean? 
Turn one, just deal two damage, I guess is fine. I kind of like the card advantage in this matchup. And Spirits Unleashed doesn't really kill much. Because they have Plaza Guardian, right? That's about their only unit besides their champs. Alright. Well, I'm going to go... Maximum damage, I believe. Ah, oh, gosh. I really don't enjoy playing... I do not enjoy playing Warning Shot Jagger Butcher on turn one. I feel like it's just such a waste of cards. Not a waste. Like, you do push damage. But it's very expensive in your card size. You know what I mean? Like, you're already down to three cards on turn one. Just for one unit, that's not really going to become a bigger threat. Don't ask for permission or forgiveness. Uh, we can do this now, though. Because they can't kill the Jagged Butcher if they use Flare. That's pretty good. I'll probably have to play that next turn, though. I think it's better to just play Tusk Speaker to try to push damage this turn. Either they take a ton of damage, or they try to save save it to kill Samir next turn. Okay. Well, that's kind of whatever. Now I'll just attack with this dude. Because they can't open attack kill a Jagged Butcher unless they commit more spells. If they take an, Yeah, if they take an action this turn, we can Spirits Unleash to put... Or to kill the two Scrap Scuttlers. So we can go Spirits Unleash plus Mario Warden this turn. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this how that played out. They obviously have a ton of tempo. Like, plays like this where they can just pick off our stuff. But the fact they're already down to 13. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty okay. Now Samir's in Mystic Rain. Or, uh, Make It Rain range. It's going to be tough for her to stay alive forever without them blocking our stuff. We can go Mirai Warden into an open on Ivan Akuburus. I like that a lot. Because they won't... Surely they can't play Plaza Guardians this turn, right? No, I've never met nice. Like and I will take the open attack even with... Hmm. That's pretty good. Samira still dies though if she blocks. And Seraphine can't kill Jagged Butcher. Seraphine can't kill our tentacle either. Those are nice draws, I think. Just try to go wide. Eventually, they're going to be able to kill off just enough of our stuff where it's going to become a problem. But if they go down to 7 here, how much can we really deal with that? With leveled Seraphine. Leveled, uh, leveled Samira. Level Seraphine coming soon. But Seraphine's just so nasty. Like, I don't even know how we interact with that, you know? We just have no interaction for that card unless we burnt, like, six mana. That's not bad. Yeah, like, this is literally, like, the third unit they've killed for free. Like, I can't I can't commit a monster harpoon here. We just have to let it go. Is it better to go with Shellshock or Mirai Warden? Just try to go wide. I don't particularly think so. Like Shell Shocker and Mirai Warden, Spirits Unleashed. We wouldn't have enough mana for that, I guess. So I don't think it does much. I think I'm just going to play Bjerg and try to get a leveled Gangplank. Or is it Johnny? Obviously fantastic. Plus Mirai Warden is really good. I'm going to play Mirai Warden, because if they have zero cost spells to like use on our units, like they can kill our tentacle anyways, so it doesn't particularly matter if it's our tentacle or our Mirai Warden or whatever. I'd rather make sure they don't end the turn, uh, because I need to go wide as well as put over the top pressure with Sejuani, I think, to finish out this game as their champions are about to be leveled, and they're about to finish up the board. Like if they have Plaza Guardians in hand, we're kind of in trouble. 
We can go to Joanny to freeze one of them. Or potentially potentially several. If we have a Sichuani level of condition. I like the Thunder trigger, I mean. But I'm not confident that our open attack is going to be any good. Or not our open attack, excuse me. Oh, that sucks. If we develop Sejuani, we're probably in a little bit of trouble. That was a really nice draw, so we can play Sejuani. Then if they play the Plaza Guardian, we can freeze the board. I think I have to develop here. I don't think our open attack is good enough. When they can probably pretty easily get a level Seraphine into like a Caustic Riff. I don't know how to beat decks like this as the Thunder player though. I feel like it's such a struggle sometimes for me to like understand what the heck I'm supposed to do here. Don't hold anything back. I won't. Light stage amp. Alright, let's jam. I think I take my attack, just try to push damage as well we can. Yeah. And then this looks like it's game over. I don't think we can do anything at this point. Maybe I was supposed to try to play a harpoon earlier, but... Then we give them like an entire turn to develop. Yeah, I don't know. This one's, this one's looking over. I will scoop this up, I believe. Maybe I'll give it like a turn, but at this point, if I was just playing on my own ladder, I'd probably just scoop it up. No problem. I think I have to let this go. Another Sejuani would be really good. I don't know if Gangplank's enough to win. They're, they're almost certainly going to have more Disintegrates and Fox, so I don't even think our champions are going to live. Actually, I might play Harpoon this turn. Just kill Seraphine. Because next turn we can go Bjerg plus Champion. I guess we can go Bjerg plus Sejuani, but Bjerg plus... Game playing still does the job. Gosh, are they trying to kill us here? Oh no, they just rally, that's right. Sure, good game. I love playing that deck, but man, sometimes I feel so helpless against it. Obviously, we're playing against a really good player too. And I don't even mean to complain, um, cause like, it's obviously, I think everybody would agree the deck's a little too powerful at the moment. But I just, I'm frustrated cause I feel like I don't know what, what to do. I'm not a good enough player to like counter it or understand how to play the matchup properly. Because I enjoy that style of deck a ton. I just wish I was better at understanding the matchup, if that makes sense. I'm pretty happy with this hand, honestly. Probably some cheeky elusives we can kill with Spirits Unleashed. What are they keeps? I don't know. Especially when we don't have anything guaranteed to activate March on turn two. I'd rather have a Mirai Warden or a Tusk Speaker, so I think it's probably worth it to pitch it to look for the higher end cards. In. 
I'm pretty happy to use this here. They're almost certainly going to open attack next turn. So I'd rather kill Teemo, even though it maybe loses us one extra plunder trigger. We get to push a lot of extra damage, and we stop them from getting their elusives going. Because like, imagine this turn, uh, if they open attack, then we're kind of like doing whatever. We play Jessica Girl. I don't know, maybe it's not the end of the world. Maybe I would have preferred it for Kelt Maidens, but I don't know. We're fine, I think, for now. We're developing a pretty spooky board. And if we open attack, they don't have a ton of great options, even if we don't draw a good unit here. Yeah, I think this is fine. It worked out okay, not great. I'm fine with that trade, too. We already put them down to 12. I'll probably just go I have Nagakaburus here, since we have Sejuani in hand anyways, we don't necessarily need the tutor right now for Gangplank. And I'd rather find like a Make It Rain. Okay, didn't go quite as planned. Obviously we don't have enough mana for Make It Rain, so maybe another parlay would have been nice. But again, we have a good attack. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I don't even know if it's worth it to increase the cost by one there. Like, this guy getting negative two health seems like a pretty big deal. Because I'm not gonna be casting this for a long time anyways, right? Uh, I think Make It Rain into Bjerg's pretty good here. Kill two blockers. Uh, and guarantee a plunder trigger even if, if like, if something else happens here. Like, I don't even know what it could be. Oh, interesting. Wow, I think I'm incredibly happy with that, like, turn of events. This kelp maiden can't kill anything, it's only a chump blocker. Teemo still can't block, like, I think we're looking pretty all right here. They only have enough mana for freeze, so they can't pump Teemo to get a positive trade. Yeah, I'm still okay with this. And they have to trade away the Teemo after pumping him anyways. Wow, 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 okay. So we have four damage left. How do we deal that? Probably, honestly, Gangplank. Level him up into an open attack is the best option here. Okay, well, I'll just counter on my own Sejuani then. And now what they do, what do they do? Yep, GG. If anybody has a good Diana Nocturne deck, let me know. I'm really interested in trying it out. I don't know if it's any good in Eternal. I don't even think there are stats for it, actually, at the moment. Let's see, is there even anything for Diana? No, not even enough for Diana. Wild. Uh, let me check Runeter AR. Sometimes I think they have more expanded stats for decks that don't have anywhere near as much play rate. Draven Jinx, youth. Actually, I kind of like Bjerg in this matchup as a way to guarantee we end up hitting Sejuani without keeping Sejuani in our opener, because at least Beer's a like, usable unit on turn 4. But I think I think it's just a, a full mole except for Tusk Speaker. Alright, ranked Eternal, everyone, all ranks. Uh, let's go Master Ranks. Uh, I mean, let's go all ranks, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with this. Champions. Diana. Not enough, not enough rank. Even in, even in all ranks, not enough data. Current patch, wow. I can't believe it's, there's like literally not even enough data for that. 
I'll just take my open. Will I? What do they play? What are they going to play that I don't want to attack into? Because they get a plunder trigger either way. So I don't particularly care about, like, that aspect of it. Yeah, I'm okay with this. We have Make It Rains and Spirits Unleashed to kill this. And I don't want to trade my only fearsome blocker. Some Ginger. Our turn looks kind of ugly. Hopefully they just take the pass. Okay, well that's also fine. not a card I was expecting at all. But I'm pretty happy to see that. That's solo tempo. Like, I was scared they'd have two fearsome units or something, like a sum judge or something. I'm pretty happy to see that. That's obviously a lot of burn damage. But this turn we get to go Spirits Unleashed. Probably, yeah, I'm just gonna go Spirits Unleashed. I don't want to play Gangplank when he can't attack or block very easily. And I'm just going to be able to set this up for... Tentacle can kill either Ballistic Bite if they attack. Jagged Butcher is going to be huge. Next turn we can just slam Sejuani. Yeah, we're definitely in a little bit of a race though. But now we can use Sejuani and Draven, which I'm pretty happy to see. Time for the money makers. Really? I think I'm fine with this. Never mind, we're taking a butt ton of damage. Holy smokes. I'm not okay with this. I don't know if there's much else we could have done that turn. I don't think Big Gangplank would have been any good. Yeah, maybe we're just kind of dead now, huh? We'll get Sejuani on board. Maybe I should have used Warning Shot there to try to get... Uh, the, her level up closer. Because now we're kind of just dead to decimate plus any burn, yeah. Okay, GG. Crazy, that kind of just exploded on us that turn. I usually really enjoy those. Um, aggro-ish versus aggro matchups. I think it's a lot of fun. Ah, uh, all the all the good Masters players are playing Samira Seraphine. I feel like it's such a hard matchup for us, and all the best players are playing it. All right, let's go like this. Again, I don't mind keeping I am Nakaburos. Maybe that's a little too slow in this matchup, but I feel like it's pretty solid because. They're going to have enough removal, and Seraphine's such a problem. I'm going to use the, the Warning Shot here if I'm going to play Jagged Butcher, because it makes it harder for Samira to get free kills. And then this turn I can just pass. Yep, never playing there into Samira. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Again, this makes it so our Tusk Speaker next turn is too big for our opponent to kill with Samira. Or we can even just play Bjerg. I'm always tempted to go wide against them, but I don't know if that's the best play here. Like, if we play Bjerg a 4 5, that's kind of difficult for them to do deal with. Or we can just go double Tusk Speaker, that's pretty good. Bjerg's just kind of good here, though. If they're going to kill a unit, they're going to kill...
They have Disintegrate in their deck, so I do want to go wide. This gets a Plunder Trigger. Plus, they have to invest more cards if they want to kill this one with Samira. Like, the fact that almost all of our cards are out of Mystic Shot, except for, like, Mirai Warden, is really nice. High Note's less effective. Constant Griff's much more difficult to pull off. Okay. Pretty okay with this. That's a heavy investment for a 1 for 1. Like, 4 mana isn't that bad. They're pretty tapped out. They can't kill anything with Samira still. Our open attack's looking pretty nasty as well. Because Pirouette is a problem. So I might just go... The... I have Nakaburus here. Again, it'll be a 3-3. Three, three. So it'll be difficult for our opponent to... Use Samira effectively here. I'm pretty happy with this play. Hmm, that's pretty good. Saves them a lot of damage and sets up a Samira attack. There's no way. You have to do something else here. I don't think you can go down to three in this matchup. Hey, Adiv Ed I don't know how to say your name. Adiva. <laughs> I'm going to call you Eddie. Adiva? Ediva? Ediva, baby? I don't know. Maybe I got there. How's it going? Welcome to the chat. I appreciate it. Stop it in. <laughs> Sorry, I absolutely butchered your name. I have no idea where the syllabic breakups are in that. You know what I mean? I don't know either. Oh my gosh, yeah. But yeah, doing pretty good. Playing some Plunder. Um, fairly good record so far, but we're really struggling against Samira. I think I have to be okay with this block. Play with the little Samira, which is a problem. But it sets up Make It Rain. We get 4 damage in with Tusk Speaker, which is pretty, pretty big. Next turn, we'll have 6 mana, so we could go Make It Rain, Merchant, Mirai Ward, and that's not bad. Chillin' just wanted to see the state of the game, haven't played for a while. Oh, gotcha. Have you been playing any other card games? I find, like, I go through phases of card games, where I'll be like, yeah, I, um, I'm not into LOR at the moment, and I'll just grind Magically Gathering all the time. I don't know how it happened, but I became, like, addicted to card games where they're, like, my main hobby. I own so many Magic cards, even, like, when I don't play all build decks and stuff. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't played uh, LOR for about uh, two months. I got a full jo time job thing. So I started not streaming as much. So I just got back into it about a month ago. Or not, about a week ago because you need streaming again. So kind of learning the eternal meta. Yeah, a lot, a lot of room tear too, but I stop and come back and stop again. Yeah. I, um, even during the whole entire like month and a half that I wasn't like playing at all, like I didn't even start the game. I watched LOR almost every day. Leveled Samira into Costa Griff looks real sad for us. So we could time check into a champion off the top, which would be pretty good, I feel. Uh, again, Shell Shocker just kind of walks into a Costa leveled Costa Griff. Something I'm going to play in this turn. Well, I guess we got a little punished, right? If we went Shell Shocker first, we could have gone Spirits Unleashed plus Mariah Wooden afterwards. I saw Nidalee as a new card. I still hope for my boy Rakan. Yeah, I was so excited for um, Nidalee and like Nico and all the artwork and everything. Obviously, it makes me really excited for that. I've been hoping for Nico for a while. The Transform mechanic never really was like my favorite thing. I'm not a big fan of like the current timelines aspect, and I'm not. Um, I don't know, I don't think like the, the Vandal City version was ever incredible. But I enjoyed cards like Teeny Dactyl and stuff like that. So I was excited to see like the archetype get a whole bunch of new stuff. Also, this is really bad. Our opponent's about to do some crazy stuff probably. If they hit like a Guiding Touch, we're in trouble. But Recon would be really cool. I think Recon Zaya would be dope. Okay, well I don't think that's a problem for us right now. Super cool star chart. Most of it's like the, the slow speed or unit speed stuff. If one unit hits, maybe we can finish this off. I don't know about you, but Karma, best card in the game. First main card and still. Yeah, Karma's pretty nasty. 
I um I think she's a cool card. Obviously a little frustrating to play against sometimes when it feels like there's like just this inevitability like you lose on turn ten. But she's a super cool design. I think it's a lot of fun for a control deck. Shoot. It's pretty good. One or two health left. Spirits unleashed. Put him down to one. Um yeah, I guess I guess we I guess we play Spirits Leashed first so that when we develop our guys have a little bit of extra health. And this kills Seraphine. I actually didn't even notice that. That's that's a that's a much is that <laughs> is that a chicken out of my picture? Literally everybody asks if it's a bird. Uh it's actually my dog. Um she's looking out the car window, her head is facing away from us. But someone literally just asked if it's a pheasant the other day. I find that so funny. Because it's like I guess too tiny to see. But no, it's just my puppo looking out the the car window. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to find a new picture when that's a little bit more more clear. Okay, there we go. It's the dog from Mask. <laughs> yes, actually though. Actually though, when I was a kid and I saw that movie, I literally was like, Oh my gosh, look how cool the doggy is. It looks just like my dog. That's actually hilarious that you mentioned that, because I totally thought that as a kid. Alright, let me check what our win rate was tonight. I thought we did pretty well. I mean, I did that with every Jack Russell Terrier, though. Anytime I saw Jack Russell Terrier, I was like, look, it's my doggy. Um, I don't know if you know the show Frasier, but Eddie from Frasier was always the one I was like, oh look, it's just like Eddie. Oh, my stats aren't loading right now. Let me see if the online version's working. Doesn't look like it, unfortunate. Um, one more try, one more try. Yeah, it doesn't look like the site's working at the moment. So I'm not sure what our record was. We played a lot of games though, it felt like it flew by. Um, but yeah, I thought this deck felt pretty smooth. Am I from USA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the good old Eastern time zone, baby. The only other archetype change I saw, there was, or not the only other one, but there was one deck list that had a smaller sample size that had a higher win rate that cut one copy of I actually don't remember what it was. I was pretty happy with how this one felt, though. Sorry for the research on the fly here. Yeah, so we're only running two Parley so that we can cram in an extra copy of... Um, what am I looking here? Okay, the highest win rate one, 64%. So 3%, 3% points better than this one, but in only 30 matches. Played an extra copy of Parley. And one less copy of Bjerg. No, no Field of Rush either. But I was pretty happy with how this felt. The other like, deck list didn't play Monster Harpoon either. Monster Harpoon didn't come up all that often, but I feel like it's still a reasonable card. I thought it'd be more useful against Seraphine, but I think Ser Seraphine, once they get going, it's just so fast. I don't want to be investing four mana into killing Seraphine. Like, I'd rather be like, okay, I need to kill you quickly. I'm going to just go wide. You always hated Sejuani? Oh my gosh, I love Sejuani. She's one of my favorite champions in the game. I think her level up animations and everything are cool. Bristle's so fun. Um, I, I miss Plunder, so I thought this was a fun stream. I'll be back tomorrow night, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, what day is it? Friday? I'll be off Tuesday, so that's when my next, like, long stream will be. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys around. And hope you have a good one.